Hey actor friends, welcome back to Shakespeare with Sarah where I break down Shakespeare for actors. Today I'm talking about Juliet's gallop the pace you fiery footed steeds. Now I have done a monologue breakdown video on this one so if you need that one I'll link it in the description. This is going to be quick tips that I've been utilizing with quite a few coaching clients as well as actors doing actual shows. The first thing I want you to know about this monologue is it's actually quite tricky. So even though it's very popular, don't assume that because it's popular, it's gonna be easy. It's not that easy. Hopefully these tips will help you out a little bit in your prep. So the first thing before I jump into the tips is actually a correction from my last video. I pronounced the name Phaeton as um, Phaeton, which is just, embarrassing quite frankly uh it was one of my earliest videos and i was there anyway i don't even want to talk about it it is pronounced phaeton it needs to actually be three syllables because of the rhythm so now that that's out of the way we can never talk about it again right so straight into our tips these three tips one of them is quite practical one of them is a bit risque and the other one is a little bit trickier but very very useful so tip number one is practice this monologue in the evening around about sunset or that dusky kind of time you know how when the evening is coming you get that kind of energy maybe it's just me but i think it's lots of people get this energy of possibility and transformation that kind of energy really really helps this monologue because it's all about that that time of change between day and night which is reflects that time of change for her between child and woman but also generally it has that feeling of possibility and hope and wonder like what's gonna happen what will i choose what will this be like and that's exactly what's going on for her so literally practice at that time of day open the window okay now something a bit risque practice this monologue in your lingerie or in your nice pajamas if you prefer this monologue is about anticipation, as I talked about in the other video. So if this is a surprise to you, please go and watch that other video. This is her preparing to have sex for the first time. And if you sit in your lingerie on your bed, you will probably channel a bit of that feeling. I think when it comes to this monologue, you don't have to be really overt about what's going on for her. It doesn't have to be all in your face sexuality but there is a sense of anticipation and nervousness and excitement and all of those like positive things. You can choose how far to take it, but it's useful to give yourself that sense of vulnerability and anticipation that you experience if you're sitting on your bed in your lingerie. So yeah, I'm not gonna go further into that because it might get weird, but it's really actually very helpful. The third tip is to use the personification that occurs in this monologue and really connect to it. This monologue utilizes describing um, elements of nature as people. So she's talking about the sun, she's talking about, um, she has like the knight being a sober suited matron all in black. There are a couple of instances where she's talking to elements of nature like their people. I want to remind you that this is a soliloquy and that does not mean that she's talking to herself. There may be times where she is reflecting on how she feels, but mostly this is either talking to nature or talking to the audience. Okay, so that's really important to track throughout the monologue as well. In those times when she's talking to nature, she's talking to them as if they are people like she's having a conversation with them and sometimes it's almost like she's expecting them to respond or change based on what she's saying and this is a common theme throughout shakespeare because they had a very different relationship with nature and the universe than we do now what i find helpful about it is if you think about literally a matron like a sort of grumpy governess or nurse coming into the room she's wearing black it's very she's one of those victorian looking ladies with tight lips and a tight bun and she's come in and she's going all right this is what's going to happen young lady if you imagine her coming into your room and interacting with you during this um, moment of vulnerability can you imagine how that would actually make you feel so when she's talking to nature she's either conversing with them in a way that she's sharing openly or she's actually expecting something to happen maybe it's almost like casting a spell now if that sounds a little bit hippy dippy to you 
Another image that might work for you is, you know when you're a kid and you're blowing out the candles on your birthday cake and you make a wish and you were young enough to believe that maybe it could come true and you were trying to communicate with the universe and that part of yourself in that way that was like, come on, make this happen. This is gonna be awesome. That is something that's going on for Julia as well. So if you don't really like the idea of a, a spell or chatting to the sun gods, get that vibe of like, I'm making a wish on my birthday candles and I really want it to happen. If you found that helpful, can you please give the video a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel? That is the best way to support me and help me make more videos for people. Thank you very much for being here. Drop me a comment with what else you wanna know and which other monologues you want to see me break down. Bye.